Not a long time ago, uh, Queen of Time got a golden album status. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what does it mean for you? Well, of course, it's a great pleasure since it's my uh, well, it's my first album with Amorphis for like uh, 17, 18 years, and, uh, and that's my first gold album, actually. Even true, I've played on the 90s albums as well. But um, well, of course, it warms my heart. Like it's a great pleasure uh, that people are still buying physical albums, okay. and. Uh, for example, um, in Finland it was uh, the most sold uh, physical album mm -hmm. of this year, okay. or was it last year, wh whatever, so, uh, and people are actually starting to uh, buy vinyl albums, especially. Yeah, which some is kind of gimmick. Right yeah, now, yeah, which is like a really, really nostalgic for, for mm -hmm. myself, because uh, I still have my stack of vinyl at home, wow. and uh, I sort of prefer vinyl album sound so uh, ah, okay. it's it's the uh, it's most pretty warm it's warm and it's i think it's most like mm -hmm. um, tactical format anyway okay. so, and it, it's if you listen to vinyl it's um like uh, you really concentrate on music ah. like a okay side of time so uh, i got your point but yeah. there's a golden status of queen of time did it change something for, for the band i don't think so because uh uh since uh Tommy Olsen joined the band. I think uh, the band has sold gold in Finland with okay. every release. So, uh, of course, it means something for the band, but uh, still, it's not anything new. And uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a statement from the fans. So, uh, oh, okay. It's, it's of course, of course, uh, it's a pleasure for us. And. Uh, Hi there, this is Oli Pekka Laine and uh, we are playing in Israel, Tel Aviv tonight and you are watching Antichrist. You Usually you release an album in two or three years. Queen yeah. of Time was released in May 2018. Uh, so is there any chance to hear the new album from Amorphis in 2020? Uh, I fear not, because uh, we are uh, planning to keep on touring mm -hmm. next year. Uh, we have a 30th anniversary okay. uh, coming, so uh, we are probably doing some sp special shows in, uh, in Europe and uh, in States and in Japan uh, next year. All right. So uh, that will take some time and uh, mm -hmm. I think... Uh, we will play the last Queen of Time dates with Dimo Burger in, uh, <laughs> in Europe uh, on February, in early February. So uh, then we have a couple months break and then we uh, start to rehearse oh. some stuff for the anniversary shows. Okay. Which will last until, um, say, the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And then we probably start to uh, work on the new album. So uh, it will take to at least 21 to release another album for a month. Okay, we will, we will wait. <laughs> yeah, okay. As fans, we will wait. Uh, okay, uh, so the band uh, did a massive tour supporting uh, Under the Red Cloud, uh, a day off, as I know, and uh, Amorphous started to record Queen of Time immediately. Yeah. Um, now you are already touring uh, something like a year and a half with Queen of Time. Uh, Gals, how do you manage not to get tired from each other? Uh, well, we are enjoying what we're doing. That's the uh, like a primary thing here. Mm -hmm. but, uh, still, of course, we have breaks. Just okay. as I said, uh, we have a uh, like two-month break between the tours next February. So uh, we have some leisure time as well. Um, so uh, and after we record an album, there will be naturally like few months mm -hmm. uh, before we start to tour. So uh, uh, like um, to balance the hard work uh, which we are doing on tour, we are okay. having some breaks as well. So uh, and after this uh, uh, Turkish and Israeli leg, mm -hmm. we have also one month off. So. Uh, Oh. We have time to rest as well and do the things we enjoy doing. Oh. So, uh, so that's great. Yeah. Hope you also get some rest here in Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been on, on the beach already, and uh, 
in the in Jaffa, in the oh. old town, and uh, yeah, we've been enjoying our time here. Okay. Um, about uh, Queen of Time, um, you used a lot of interesting instruments, but I have a question about the saxophone solo and Daughter of Hate. Yeah. Uh, whose idea was uh, to put it in a song? I think it was uh, Jens's idea, after all, mm -hmm. because um, well, he he's, he did the production and okay. uh, he came up with the ideas of adding orchestration and chorus and and. Uh, and acoustic guitars and stuff like that and uh, but still uh, we were using saxophone already uh, on uh, Tuonela which was released in 98 okay so that's not entirely new thing for us mm -hmm. and uh, uh, well I think it fits 20 years anniversary yeah, of yeah, saxophone in Amorphous <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> and I'm, I'm not quite sure mm -hmm. if we were uh, one of the first metal bands generally using saxophone. I think we were. Uh, who in, knows? In, two, uh, in 2018, it was uh, like back to fashion because you, yeah. you, you Amorphous was the first yeah. that here who used it. Yeah, yeah. Ghost also and yes. uh, some other bands. Yeah, sh there's a Shining from Norway and uh, uh, yeah, which, which is like based on. That. But but anyway, uh, we like. Uh, copied the idea from mm -hmm. a band called Kings the Wall because okay. there was uh, a guy called Sakari Kukko who played in who plays in Pierpauke, mm -hmm. a band called Pierpauke, which is okay. uh, kind of a, a proggy folk band which is like um, combining uh, prog rock and uh, different folk in influences from Africa and uh, from Finland and uh, wherever. So uh, there's a guy called Sakari Kukko who, is, who was playing uh, with the band Kings the Wall. Mm -hmm. He just played live with them and, uh, on one album and uh, we were big fans of Kings the Wall. So uh, okay. we decided to ask him mm -hmm. to play on our album as well. Great. <laughs> there is an opinion that Amorphous was the first band that made a huge breakthrough for Finnish heavy scene, like, uh, like uh, Finnish metal scene and Finnish music and uh, if there wasn't uh, Tales from the Thousand Wakes uh, it will be much harder to gain a fan base for bands like Nightwish, Children mm. of Bodom and all the huge Finnish bands that we know now. Uh, what do you think about it? Well, uh, yeah, it's... It was uh, kind of uh, not accidental, but mm -hmm. uh, we uh, like came from the underground, so it was a little bit easier for us to break through from there. Okay. Instead of trying to get to the mainstream audience mm -hmm. immediately, so we gained uh, our fan base little by little from the underground scene, and uh, we did something special. We tried to mix influences and uh, tried to do something really original with our music and uh, which in which we succeeded pretty well i think so uh, that kind of made amorphous a special band in the uh, underground metal scene okay as well so uh, we didn't do anything intentionally we didn't mm -hmm. try to uh, uh, become a bigger band or whatever we just dreamed of uh, releasing some albums and mm -hmm. uh, that's it and uh, everything after that game as a as a bonus, you know. So, uh, and I think that's the strength of the band as well, that we are not trying too much or mm. being too pushy for, for ourselves, like uh, with, with our music, and we are not trying to uh, flirt with some particular ah, okay. parts of uh, listeners. <laughs> no, because it's kind of contrarized with uh, what you just said, that you're not trying too hard. Because I see that you are trying hard to yeah. make music. Yeah, yeah, but, and, but we are, first of all, we are yeah. pleasing ourselves mm -hmm. with the music we do. Okay. So uh, that's the uh, key for um, like uh, get, getting interested by, by the public as well. In one interview, uh, Tommy said, his, his quote, we are still trying to make our best album every time we are in studio. In that case, how much better will be your next album? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe uh, we can all, always improve, but uh, uh, the, the main thing is that we, we'd, like, we'd like to uh, 
try new things every mm -hmm. time and uh, entertain, entertain ourselves by trying to do as original music as possible and uh, try new ideas, you know. Okay. It's not possible to uh, make uh, like a same album again, mm -hmm. uh, like try to do a carbon copy of Queen of Time. Yeah, uh, totally. Not. Or any like successful album mm -hmm. if uh, if we uh, like uh, succeed to do a great album, mm -hmm. we just try to uh, figure out new things the next time. Okay, is there an option that somehow you will record your best album in these terms? Uh, yes, I think it's still possible. I think. Uh, no, no, no. I mean. Uh, that you will record an album and you will say, okay, this is our best album ever. Ah. And we will never reach it anymore. I don't think so. It will never happen because th th then it wouldn't be like inspiring anymore, <laughs> you know. Okay. I, th I think we can top ourselves every time uh, mm -hmm. in, in some uh, aspect, you know. Yeah, um, I'd say that um, that's what that's what happened like last ten years yeah. with Amorphous. Well, I'd say like we have done our best uh, mm -hmm. death metal album when we did Karelian mm -hmm. and uh, and then we did our best um, as best good as best <laughs> as good album as we can okay. on 2018 when mm -hmm. we did uh, Queen of Time. So. Uh, it's easy as that, like, you know. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much.